Jamais Sans Elle is promoting gender diversity and women inclusion in all sectors of society, originally through a very simple action which does not require any special policy and can be applied any, uh, by anyone immediately. By signing the Jamais Sans Elle pledge, I commit much myself to never participate to any panel, conference or expert committee of any sort if there are no women, and I let it know. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, but it proved remarkably efficient in uh, requiring from the organizers of events and committees uh, that they indeed pay attention to gender balance. And as a matter of fact, many prominent stakeholders uh, in the digital world and beyond have adopted the Jamais Sans Elle pledge and promoted it in their environment with very concrete and enduring effects. So the action of Jamais Sans Elle are not uh, limited to women participation and visibility, they also focus on women access to key leading position and in all types of environment. Uh, the, the, I should say that the movement reached also the political world with many deputies and senators uh, joining in and also the, the, the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs in France and the Minister himself, uh, Jean-Yves Le Drian, and the Minister for European Affairs, Nathalie Loiseau, also uh, signed them from themselves and, and sent a call to all French ambassadors and consuls around the world to, to commit themselves. And also in, in, um, in, in Germany, actually, the the German Minister of State for Europe, uh, Michael Roth, now became a very active member and promoter of the movement. Anyway, we are here today because we have been actively participating to the Women 20 process in preparation of the G20 summit in Buenos Aires in two weeks from now, actually. Um, we actually we were uh, invited by the Argentinian leaders of this engagement group to work along with 100 delegates from the G20 uh, countries with very different profiles. So this has been multi-stakeholderism in practice uh, for several months, and it led to a series of recommendations finalized during the W20 summit in Buenos Aires last month, where Natasha and myself were the head of delegation for France. Uh, the main thing we learned from the process is that the multi-stakeholder approach is absolutely crucial when it comes to addressing issues in somewhat disruptive domains, such as digital economy, Disruptive in the sense that they interact with traditional organization of the society, whether of the work or of the relation between people, in a way that offers remarkable opportunities, but also carries some threats and possibilities of imbalance and potentially uh, 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 leaving people along the way. This is the case for various issues regarding digital inclusion, but the question of women inclusion in general also impacts the organization of relations with the society. And as it turns out, the, the two are not unrelated, of course. So, indeed, digital economy can be a very powerful tool of empowerment through digital entrepreneurship, obviously, but also by giving access to much larger areas of activities and providing opportunities for visibility, influence, and, and participation of individuals. But because this new horizon can open in many different ways, at different paces, in different contexts, and lead to different types of back reaction and side effects, positive or negative, the multi-stakeholder approach is absolutely crucial. And uh, what we personally learned from this experience is that it can be indeed very efficient. So a first message regarding multi-stakeholderism uh, is that what is actually needed is not representativeness per se, uh, but most of all expertise. And no one has universal expertise. Uh, so, uh, because digital economy is so pervasive, it's bound to raise problems in all sorts of areas and require expertise that may not have been anticipated in, in the first place. So an interesting example is the way artificial intelligence suddenly proved to develop very strong gender biases in different contexts. Um, so, you don't want everyone on board to be able to say, look, we are great, we, we are very inclusive. You want on board all the people who can actually contribute and show other participants what they would not have seen or been able to think about uh, by themselves. And therefore, you need to include different types of uh, stakeholders. In the case of uh, W20, the Women 20, the delegates do not only come from uh, countries with different uh, situations uh, and traditions regarding situation of women, 
whether in Canada, Japan, India, Argentina, or Saudi Arabia. Uh, they also have different profiles and backgrounds, civil society, rural areas, uh, women right fighters, entrepreneurs, local association, NGOs. Anyway, to come back to the process itself, it develops through a series of online meetings with webinars, sharing of experience, exchange of documents and information. And it was organized into four distinct areas with some links, of course. So work inclusion, financial inclusion, digital inclusion. And this year, the Argentinian uh, leadership uh, uh, wished to have a special focus on women in uh, rural areas, uh, which indeed proved very meaningful, actually. Each of these components had a physical meeting in the form of a workshop during the year, uh, each in a different country. Uh, in the case of digital inclusion, it was uh, in Paris, actually. Uh, and finally, 65 delegates from the, the, the 20 countries were able to meet in person for the summit in, in Buenos Aires, the, 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 the Women's Summit, uh, W20 Summit, last month, beginning of last month, where the official communique was finalized and approved with 15 recommendations, three of which actually focus on digital inclusion. This was again an interesting experience regarding multi stakeholderism in general. Writing an official community is, of course, never an easy task because at the end of the day, you have to come up with actual sentences uh, that everybody agrees on. But in the case of G20 and, or G7 engagement groups, this is not a political or diplomatic issue. I mean, this is left for the, the actual summit between the heads of, state, of states. Uh, it's more about finding proper formulations for recommendations that should not only suit everyone, but be efficient globally. Uh, this is the key point. And uh, being efficient means uh, making sense in all sorts of environments and also not risking to meet any showstopper that would not have been thought of if one did not have the complete uh, perspective. But this requires true interaction over time to better know each other's problematic and gain wider uh, knowledge and expertise to be including in our own views and preoccupation. So this is another important message. We need time to be efficient and we need to build a community. Uh, the Argentinian women who led the, the, the W20 this year are making a lot of efforts in this direction so that we keep the ball running and turn this intense activity that took place uh, on this occasion into a longer term process supported by efficient and uh, proactive community. Um, so for this, we need appropriate tools. We need a platform, notably a digital platform, suitable framework, and also fluid, uh, reactive framework, neither too much organized or too diffuse, and financial resources as well. Uh, the various states and governments should not supervise the work and interaction of the stakeholder, but they should provide minimum resources to ensure that these works and interactions indeed occur, grow, and lead to concrete, concrete uh, results. The example of the W20 community can be a very good starting point, but there is a question of continuity from one year to the next, as you were mentioning. In the case of W20, some heritage is transmitted since the creation of the W20 uh, during the Turkish presidency. And actually, next week uh, in Tokyo, there will be a meeting at the uh, Argentinian embassy for the W20 Argentina handover and the W20 Japan kickoff. Uh, but dedicated resources to keep the momentum are definitely needed. Uh, I think it's also the responsibility of G7 and G20 countries and governments to ensure this continuity at the level of the engagement groups. Remember in particular that the various stakeholders and delegates have been working solely on their own resources so far, and we all know that the limits of that. And uh, in addition, this creates a bias uh, and uh, some imbalance between different types of stakeholders, uh, depending on the resources that they can, they can deploy on short term or long term. So this is, of course, detrimental to the very idea of multi-stakeholderism, right? So finally, coming back to digital issues, uh, Jamais Sans Elle, our association, has several ideas and su subjects to push forward, of course, but this is not the place to discuss them. From the general point of view, we believe that a, a gender balance a perspective should be adopted everywhere, and gender diversity should be ensured at all levels of reflection, decision, and actions. 
Um, so this view is, of, of course, uh, shared by uh, more and more people, including in digital ecosystem. A few months ago, we, we developed a, 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 a charter together with My Microsoft uh, France, which is very proactive in this direction. Also, last Monday at this very forum, we announced the pledge uh, aimed at internet governance, uh, governance organizations and think tanks which has been signed by uh, the Internet Society France, Reporter Without Borders, and the think tank uh, Renaissance Numérique. So this is a part of multi-stakeholderism in the sense that actions and commitments can indeed emerge from the civil society and economical actors and generate experience that can then be shared, transplanted, and adapted uh, everywhere. Another important example is, of course, education, which is key to digital economy, and uh, innovative digital schools have recently attracted a lot of attention in France. I will go into details. But to finish, let's keep in mind that all these efforts make sense only in view um, of a more ethical, more pacified, equitable, and more inclusive world. The technology is what it is, but the digital revolution must be humanist, and as we strongly believe in uh, the association Jamais Sans Elle, feminism is a humanism. So, thank you very much.